In this video, we'll be covering Ground Control 3, fifth wheel prepped unit to full automatic leveling installation. Before you begin, disconnect your unit from shore and battery power before performing this procedure to prevent equipment damage or personal injury. The tools required to perform this procedure include a cordless drill, a three-quarter inch socket and wrench, pliers, a torque wrench, channel locks, a dry erase marker, wire strippers, and a wire cutter. Some consumable items include a string, zip ties, and wire connectors. Use approach and departure angles when mounting the mid and rear jacks. The departure angle is found by running a string from the trailing edge of the rear tire to the rear bumper of the unit. The approach angle is measured from the leading edge of the front tire to the forwardmost and lowest part of the frame. When mounting the jack to the bracket, the foot pad should not hang below the approach or departure angle. A poorly positioned jack can impact the ground when there are sudden changes to the slope of the road surface. From the middle jacks, prepare the leveling jack for installation by mounting the foot pad to the jack leg and securing it in place with a snap pin. The jack motor should be mounted facing the rear of the unit. Lift the jack into place and thread the bolt into one of the holes located on the unit's jack mounting bracket, making sure the foot pad is above the approach angle we measured earlier. Secure it to the frame using the bolts, cordless drill, wrench, and their corresponding lock nuts, then torque them down to 90 foot pounds. Connect the power, ground, and communication wires to the jack's corresponding harnesses. Then repeat this step for the other mid and the rear jacks. The rear sensor and its bracket must be installed to a rear cross member in line with or behind the rear jacks. In the correct orientation, as indicated on its outer casing. Once you've identified and marked the center of the cross member, securely seat the sensor to the bracket. The sensor should not be able to move. Then mount the bracket to the cross member. Located near the rear jacks is a slit in the underbelly of the unit, and inside of it is a wiring harness which will be tied into the rear sensor pigtail connection. Loop the harness wire and zip tie it to the cross member, pushing any remaining slack back into the slit. In the forward cargo compartment, locate the landing gear rocker switch control panel and remove four screws holding it to the compartment wall. Set them aside for later. Unplug all harnesses from the back of the switch, then disconnect the panel's power wires from the 30 amp breaker and ground from the grounding source. Remove the faceplate from the mounting bezel. Feed the touchpad harness through the original cutout. Mount the bezel to the compartment wall using the screws for the landing gear rocker switches panel. Install the controller harness to the LCD touchpad and snap the faceplate into the mounting bezel. From within the forward cargo compartment, use your wireless drill to remove several screws retaining the compartment sidewalls to gain access to the wiring harness access ports for both the left and right front landing gear harness connectors. To decouple the wiring harness from the landing gears, you'll need to access them from the propane tank storage compartments on either side of the unit. Note, the driver side propane tank may need to be removed in order to access the landing gear's wiring harness connection. Be sure to close the valve on the tank before removing it from the compartment. Decouple the harness from the landing gear jack, then break up the foam sealant holding the harness into place and push the harness connector into the cargo area. From the forward cargo compartment access door, clip the zip ties holding the harness to the frame 
to remove the original landing gear wiring harness. Install the Ground Control 3 landing gear harnesses, ensuring that the harness labeled LF for left front is run to the driver side's landing gear jack, and that the RF right front harness is run to the passenger side. Familiarize yourself with all instructions located on the controller's label. Install all six jack harnesses, power connector, and communication connectors to the corresponding port on the controller. Each harness will have a tape label indicating which side it's on, or where it is on the unit, left or right, front, middle, or rear. Connect the rear sensor and LCD touchpad harnesses to the controller. Prepare your positive and negative leads to be crimped to the appropriate wire connections. Install the 12 volt supply wire and its 30 amp breaker to the bus bar, and connect the ground wire to the frame. Crimp the controller's red wire to the 12 volt supply wire. Crimp the controller's black wire to the ground wire. Mount the controller to the ceiling of the storage compartment, no further than 12 inches in either direction, off center of the frame. Use four fasteners to mount the controller to the ceiling of the cargo compartment, ensuring that it is facing the direction indicated on its label. Zip tie any loose harnesses to the frame, and remount the cargo panel walls. Reconnect the bus bar to main power to complete the installation. To set the zero point from the LCD touchpad, begin with it off. Press the front direction pad button 10 times, and then the rear pad direction button 10 times. Too slow or too fast and it may not register. If nothing happens, try again until the touchpad turns on with all of its LEDs flashing and the screen reading zero point calibration. Press enter to set. At this time, you can manually level out the coach from the direction pad options. Raise the coach by pressing front, rear, left, or right, or retract the jacks by pressing the retract button, and pressing the direction buttons once the retract LED is lit up. Once you are satisfied with the coach being level, press enter to store this as level in the controller. The touchpad will now read, stability check, please wait. Do not move around the unit at this time as it is registering the position of the sensors with the controller. Once complete, the screen will briefly read zero point set successfully and beep before shutting off. At this time, you may turn the touchpad back on to test the system.